Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I take pictures of my corals and fish in my reef tank. Okay, let's get started. So today I'm going to show you how I take pictures of fish and corals in my aquarium. Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of theory, just kind of basics of photography. Uh, we're going to talk about equipment and the kind of lenses and, and camera setups that you could use. I'm going to talk a bit uh, about how I prepare my aquarium uh, for photography. So uh, clean up, uh, uh, cleaning the glass, but also how to set up the light. To, to be able to get the best pictures. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about camera settings and, and how I approach taking pictures and, and uh, what are the different kind of settings that I use for fish versus uh, corals. All right, let's get started. So photography is all about controlling light and there's really three main parameters that a photographer can manipulate uh, to expose the picture correctly. And these are called the holy, holy trinity of photography, holy being a hole that you're shooting through. Uh, so uh, the main parameters are aperture, uh, shutter speed, and the ISO or the sensitivity or the, of uh, the film, or in, in more cases, the sensitivity of your digital sensor and the camera. The first, uh, the first parameter is aperture, and essentially that uh, you're shooting through a, a hole, a little hole that uh, light travels through the lens into the digital sensor, and uh, the aperture is the, uh, the size of that hole. Uh, so uh, uh, f 1.4 is wider than f 8 or f 16. Uh, so that's the basics of the aperture. Now, uh, when you're changing the aperture, you're uh, you're uh, you're changing uh, one major thing, which is the depth of field of uh, of your picture. So generally, uh, the smaller the number, uh, the uh, the smaller the number is actually the the bigger the aperture. So wider apertures, you're going to have shallower depth of field. That means that. Uh, your subject is going to be in focus and only a little bit in front and behind of the subject is going to be in focus. As you make the aperture smaller, so you're picking a, a, a smaller, uh, a, a bigger number, so f8 or f16 and so on, you're getting a little bit more depth of field back. So you're, you're, you're able to uh, get more details in front and behind your subject. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind of the main considerations uh, for, uh, when you're controlling your aperture. Uh, the second parameter uh, that we uh, manipulate while we're taking a picture is the shutter speed. So how much light, how much, uh, how long are we going to keep the aperture open to let light to expose your film or your uh, or, or to uh, uh, to reach your digital sensor? And again, uh, the shutter speeds is uh, expressed as a reciprocal of one over the, the number that you actually set on your camera. So these numbers are uh, uh, per second. So uh, one sixtieth of a second or one thirtieth of a second, that's uh, uh, one uh, uh, half of a second, a quarter of a second, an eighth of a second, and so on. Uh, so typically, the, the faster your shutter speed is, so uh, that means that bigger the number uh, in the reciprocal here, uh, mean that you're, you're essentially you're going to be able to stop the action. So uh, fast shutter speeds are good for stopping the action. If you pick too slow of a shutter speed and your hand holding the camera, you're going to get a camera shake or your subject is going to be in motion. Uh, so uh, as a general rule of thumb is if you're going to hand hold the camera while you're shooting, you want uh, the shutter speed to at least be uh, a number that is bigger than the focal length of the of the lens that you're shooting with. So if you're shooting with a 105 millimeter lens, then you want to have your shutter speed at least one over 105 millimeters, or an, an even larger uh, denominator, so a, a faster shutter speed. So the last number that photographers try to control is the ISO or the sensitivity of the film. And here, the smaller the number, that means the more light that is needed to expose the film. Uh, and the less grainy the film will be. So uh, higher ISOs are generally good if you're shooting at low light, uh, uh, and uh, lower ISOs are generally good if you're shooting in natural light or, or if there's a lot of uh, light that you're working with. Uh, 
uh, you want to obviously you want to pick the highest ISO that uh, you could shoot at uh, sorry the lowest ISO that you could shoot at because your pictures are not going to be as grainy having said that a lot of the newer cameras are uh, uh, are amazingly uh, good at shooting uh, at low I at, at high ISOs uh, without a lot of graininess so uh, the, the new press the new sensors on, on digital cameras of uh, uh, are, are pretty decent at shooting at low light settings. So in general, you wanna for for every picture for every situation that you wanna you wanna shoot at, there's gonna be some combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO that are gonna give you the correct exposure. Uh, you can set uh, your camera on automatic, and and the sensor uh, there's a light meter in your camera, and the sensor is are gonna adjust these parameters to give you the best exposure. Uh, but I, I strongly recommend that you actually shoot in manual and, and try to kind of make these decisions about how your picture is gonna look like uh, and, and uh, uh, by yourself and, and, and trying to kind of develop your own style. So uh, generally what I like to do is uh, for the aperture, you wanna essentially pick a value uh, to uh, give you the composition that you're trying to uh, photograph. So if you're trying to kind of isolate the subject from the background, uh, it's generally to it's generally a good idea to use like a, a lower number, so a, a, a wider aperture. So that way you have uh, good focus and detail on your subject and everything in the background is out of focus. I find that to be pretty uh, pleasing. So I do that a lot when I'm doing fish pictures. Uh, fish portraits. Uh, if you're trying to capture a lot of detail, if you're going to take a close-up of, let's say, a coral and polyps, and you want a lot of details details to be in focus, then you want to aim for a, a lower, uh, uh, a, a bigger f-stop, uh, which means a, a smaller uh, aperture. Uh, for shutter speed, uh, again, what you want to do is if, if you're going to use a tripod and, and your subject is not really moving, then you could you go with a slower uh, exposure where you're leaving the, the shutter uh, uh, open for uh, a period of time. You're not too concerned about movement because uh, the camera is on a tripod and the subjects are typically stationary. So if you're going to be moving around and hand holding the camera, then you want to make sure that the shutter speed is faster than one over the focal length of the lens that you're shooting with. So if you're shooting with a 200 millimeter lens, then set the shutter speed to one over 200 or, or something that is even smaller than that. And then finally, ISO, what I like to do is just, what, after I set the aperture and the uh, shutter speed, I like to pick an ISO, the, the lowest ISO that I could get away with, with a, uh, 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 so that way I could reduce graininess in my picture. Uh, in some cases, I actually, uh, what I set the camera, uh, when, I, when I'm setting my camera, when I'm shooting, I put it on manual mode so I could uh, control the aperture and the shutter speed, and then I have the processor on board determine the ISO automatically and usually the algorithm will favor the lowest ISO that you could get away with after you control aperture and shutter speed. Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit about photography equipment. So uh, I shoot with a DSLR most of the time, uh, although I take I do take a lot of pictures with my iPhone. Uh, so whenever I'm just taking quick and dirty pictures to document progress in my tank, I, I use the iPhone. But if I'm trying to take pictures to submit to competitions or or whenever uh, uh, I feel really artsy and and I want to take some uh, some really nice pictures of my corals and so on, I do use my digital SLR. And so uh, a lot of people worry too much about the body and 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 spend a lot of money on, on getting uh, like a good body. But my biggest tip to you guys is invest in lenses first. So uh, lenses, good quality lenses are worth their weight in gold. Well, maybe not worth their weight in gold, but they're very valuable and, and you'll get a lot of use out of them. Uh, so for example, here is this lens. It's a micro, uh, Nikon Micro 200, it's a macro lens. It's a beautiful lens. I actually bought this when I was uh, when I was 18. <laughs> uh, that's a long time ago. I, I've had this for more than uh, 20 years, I think. So uh, you know, it, it and it's just as sharp as uh, as the day that I bought it. 
uh, versus you know bodies they come and go I change a body every every two or three years uh, you know you, you I, I don't think you'll ever like keep a, a body for more than 20 years versus my your lenses right if you get high quality lenses you're gonna get years and years and years worth of use out of them so the the first uh, first thing that if you wanted to like if you had limited money and and you weren't sure whether to get like nice lenses or a nice body I would always go with nice lenses because you're gonna use them for a much longer period of time uh, in terms of a body really anything that that has like a manual mode where you could control uh, where you could control aspects of the exposure I, I think that's good everything else is just bells and whistles right bigger displays megapixels megapixels don't really mean that much it's just the size of the image what what's gonna dictate the, the, the quality of the pictures that you take is going to be the lenses that you use as well uh, as, well as your technique uh, whether whether it's like a five megabyte uh, uh, size or a 10 mega megabytes is kind of really not useful for most hobbyists so uh, I use Nikon yeah uh, I know a lot of people use Canon it's kind of like the never endless question which is the better camera system ultimately you you kind of you pick the lenses and once you kind of invest in a couple of lenses from a specific brand you're locked in so I, I just uh, I started out with the Nikon micro lenses and I got stuck on that uh, all right so in terms of uh, when you buy a camera most of the time you're going to get a kit lens which is a zoom lens so here is that no that's not it this is the kit lens that I got uh, with uh, with this body uh, by the way, if, if you wanted to know exactly what I'm shooting with, it's a uh, Nikon D7200. Uh, uh, so most of the time when you buy a, a kit, you're going to get a zoom lens like this. Often the, the zoom lens that you get with the camera is not great. The zoom lenses are kind of uh, like a jack of all trades is a master of none type situation. So I rarely use this. I'm going to show you. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you the, the collection of lenses that I have, and I, and you're going to get to see what the pictures look like. And often the, the, I get the worst pictures out of this camera. I mean, they're still decent, but they're not as crisp or sharp. So I typically use primary lenses. Primary lenses that means they're fixed uh, focal length. They, they, you can't zoom them in and out. Uh, one of uh, a really good uh, uh, a really good lens that I typically use it's this 50 millimeter primary lens it's a great for portraits also uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to turn this into a macro with some extensions but uh, this is a really nice and sharp and quick lens but most of my photography of the tank I do with macro lenses so the difference between uh, the typical lenses like this one and the zoom is uh, you'll see this is a zoom right you'll see here uh, that where where is the information that I'm looking for? Yeah, so actually it's right on the collar here. So the closest that you're going to be able to focus this uh, this uh, length is uh, is about uh, let's say 0.38 uh, millimeter, uh, sorry meters, uh, or maybe uh, like it's about a foot. So the closest that you're going to be able to get to something and have it in focus with this camera is about uh, is about a foot. Uh, if you look here, uh, the minimal focus, the focal distance is uh, actually this one's a little bit worse. It's 0.45 millimeters, or uh, a, a more than a foot. Now, if you look at the macro lenses, so here is my a 40 millimeter macro lens, right? Uh, it's just as fast as the regular primary lens, but if you look here, this thing could focus up to uh, 0.16. Uh, of a millimeter so that is less than six inches so you could really get close to this uh, to your subject and, and take pictures where the, your subject whether it be a coral or a fish is filling up most of the frame uh, I also have I have like I think I have the entire collection of uh, Nikon macro lenses I have the 60 millimeter uh, macro which you could get up to uh, uh, 0.185 again about six inches away from your subject uh, this is one of my favorite lenses to use. It's a 100 uh, 105 uh, Nikon uh, macro, and here you could get like a one to one uh, reproduction with about a foot out. And then this camera is really, really fun. Uh, sorry, this lens is really fun, the 200 millimeter. And you could get, uh, you could shoot also uh, about a foot a foot out and get like a full size uh, image on, on your screen so uh, I like to use the macro lenses because they're really sharp and they let me get super close to the objects and and, and take uh, uh, large pictures so where you could see a lot of the details and again I'm, I'm going to show you 
Uh, I'm going to show you example shots uh, taken with all of these pictures. So here are some comparison shots so you could uh, compare the quality of the photographs taken from these different lenses. So I set up this uh, fish statue about uh, three feet away from me and I took pictures using all of my lenses but at the same settings, the aperture uh, at f4 uh, and using the onboard flash on my camera. So here's a zoom lens set at 40 millimeters and you know it's decent but nearly uh, it's not nearly as nice as the picture from the 40 millimeter uh, micro Nikkor, the macro lens. You can see way more details here and everything just seems crisper. Uh, the next picture is taken with the 50 millimeter uh, uh, portrait lens which is, you know, it's decent, it's, uh, it's good, you're getting a little bit closer because of the higher focal length. But again, this picture is not nearly as nice as the one taken with the 60 millimeter uh, uh, macro uh, uh, lens from Nikon. You can see a lot more details in this picture. Uh, the next picture is taken with the 105 uh, uh, millimeter uh, macro Nikkor. Again, this is a piece of a lens, you're getting to see some of the flemishes on the statue and the head here. And then this is taken from the 200 millimeter Nikkor. You could see a lot of details. And remember, all of these pictures are taken from the same distance. So I'm able to get way closer with the 200 millimeter lens than I am with the 105 or the 60 or the uh, 40. So in addition to kind of picture clarity, one major uh, advantage of using macro lenses is their ability to get uh, close up to the subject. So for example, I'm here using my regular uh, 50 millimeter portrait lens and that's as close as I could get to uh, my dive watch. But when I put on the 105 macro, I'm able to get really close up pictures with lots of details. You could see all the dust, uh, all the hairs on my watch face, and I could even get closer where you know, you're, you're essentially uh, magnifying a tiny tiny picture of the watch and, and getting uh, lots of details as you see on the date window here. Uh, other bits of equipment that you might want to use is uh, these are called extension tubes and essentially it's not a lens they, they just there's no glass here uh, but you mount them between your camera and the lens and essentially it extends the focal length of the lens and it allows you to get really really close-up pictures so if you don't have a macro and you don't want to invest a few hundred dollars in a macro lens essentially i'm taking i'm able to uh, use my regular 50 uh, millimeter uh, portrait lens and mount it on the extension tubes and shoot uh, at uh, uh, a higher reproduction ratio like more than one to one and I'll show you some pictures so uh, this is like maybe a hundred bucks these are like 50 bucks and I'm able to essentially take really decent macros with this setup uh, without having to invest uh, hundreds of dollars on dedicated macro lenses so you know for example uh, with this setup I'm able to take pictures that are more up close than than with this essentially thousand uh, dollar Nikon 105 uh, uh, macro lens. So here is uh, how close I could get to my watch with uh, my 50 millimeter portrait lens. Uh, so not pretty close. Uh, but as soon as I add a 36 millimeter extension tube to uh, the portrait lens, I'm able to essentially take a picture where the whole image is just of the watch's face. And when I stack all of my extension tubes together uh, for a total of I think uh, 70 uh, or 68 uh, millimeters, uh, I'm able to take really close up pictures of the dial. Uh, even closer than I could with uh, my macro lens. Uh, you want a, a heavy duty sturdy uh, tripod. Uh, there's options when you buy tri tripods of what you're gonna get at the head here. This is like a typical swivel ball head. I'm not a big fan of these. This is my backup tripod. I My, my preference is, uh, is these little uh, uh, tripod heads where you could actually control the camera uh, uh, in uh, in all three axes, so you could uh, control uh, pitch, you could control uh, angle uh, uh, side to side, and angle uh, like up and down. So you could tilt the camera forwards and backwards, uh, side to side, and you could rotate it around. And then always useful to have these little uh, uh, quick quick uh, uh, connects where you could just essentially slide the camera. Uh, into your tripod and have it be secured. I also uh, some I actually have a joystick uh, tripod. I don't I don't have it here. I, I tried to actually find it, but I, I couldn't find where I, I kept it. But uh, it's a monopod, and it's got a little joystick where you can actually like control where the camera goes, and that's useful when when you're uh, 
when you just need a little extra support uh, to, well, while you're hand holding the camera, but you don't really need a full uh, tripod setup. If you're gonna use flash with reef photography, then I recommend you get a, a, a remote flash where you're actually, you're not setting the flash right on top of the camera here so you don't get shadows. And again, we're gonna talk a little bit about that when we get to, uh, when we get to the pictures that I'm gonna show you. Uh, so if you have an option for a flash that you could actually put remotely on top of the, uh, on top of uh, your, uh, uh, of your uh, uh, canopy or on top of your aquarium or to the side, then that will give you a more pleasing result than if you actually had the camera mounted on the flash. Uh, uh, sorry, if you had the flash mounted on the camera. I typically don't use flash. Uh, I, I kind of prefer to just uh, uh, go flashless and, and, and still control the exposure and, and, and stop the action by using a fast shutter speed. All right, so that's that's essentially my equipment. Uh, most of the time, I'm shooting either with my uh, uh, 60 uh, millimeter uh, macro or my 105. Uh, but sometimes, if I want to take pictures of uh, like uh, of fish that are kind of skittish, uh, you have to back off a little bit. Uh, so in that cases, I use my 200 millimeter uh, lens. So uh, that allows me to essentially sit six. Uh, six feet or eight feet away from the camera and still be able to get really close-up pictures because uh, uh, because of the increased focal length of this uh, uh, of this uh, macro lens. So you want to make sure that your glass is clean uh, on the inside and outside before you shoot. So I have my kind of homemade cleaning solution here. Uh, it's about uh, one part vinegar, two parts uh, distilled water, half a part uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, just a tiny bit of soap. And I spray that on the glass and I uh, wipe it off with a cleaning towel. And I wanna scrape the glass on the inside. I use the Tanzi algae scraper. And I typically clean the glass a good kind of hour or two hours before I shoot. Uh, that gives uh, the, the, uh, the water for the chance for the tank to kind of clear up from all the Derbies and detritus that you will uh, that you get from cleaning your uh, inside of the glass, uh, but also that's an, an enough time that there isn't uh, that there isn't going to be more algae buildup. I highly recommend that you shift the light spectrum to towards a more white uh, light spectrum. So I typically run my tank at around 18.5k spectrum using my Radeon LEDs, but I actually have a button here. Uh, where if I click on it, it shifts the color towards a 12K spectrum and it also turns off all of my circulation in the tank. Uh, and uh, I actually did a video a while back on how you could set uh, these uh, little virtual modules that allows you to control light as well as uh, flow with the click of a button. Uh, let me show you what my typical, uh, when I shoot, what are the typical uh, uh, what are the typical settings that I, that, that I shoot at. Uh, that's not here. So here is uh, my profile for taking pictures with the Radeons. It's, uh, it's uh, essentially it's uh, uh, a lot of white, 100% white, 100% blue, 100% royal blue, 100% green, 100% red, 100% UV, 100% violet, 100% warm light. The over overall intensity is 30%. So typically when, when I'm running my SPS AP Plus program, the white and the green and the red are at 24%. But here, essentially, I'm, I'm using all the colors. I'm still using the blue. I'm still using the blue channels. I'm just using the white channels as well. Uh, the overall intensity, this is something that's really useful if you have an LED. Uh, let's say if you're shooting a shot and, and you don't want to use flash and, and you're hand holding and you're just not getting enough light uh, uh, to expose the picture correctly or to shoot that as desired film sensitivity, then what you could simply do is just up the intensity. You know your radions or LEDs are a light source that you could control, and 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 you could control it in a way to give you the exposure settings that you need. So uh, I typically shoot it uh, shoot at thirty percent, but if I'm shooting in a darker area of uh, the tank, uh, I would actually amp this up a little bit uh, to to be able to shoot at uh, lower uh, uh, lower sensitivity film. Uh, and and have uh, less grainy pictures. Uh, if you don't have uh, LEDs, 
uh, then uh, uh, I know that some uh, some people that use T5s will have uh, some bulbs that have a little bit more white spectrum and they would turn these on. Uh, if you really can't control your uh, your light and you're just stuck with blue, then the only thing you could do is essentially use uh, an orange filter. Uh, they're called blue filters, but the filter itself looks orange or yellow, and that helps color correct uh, the uh, the pictures to to uh, take some of the blue away. So after shifting your LED towards a more white spectrum, the second thing that you want to do is set the white uh, balance settings on your camera uh, to be able to deal with uh, the bluish light that we get from LEDs or T5s. And so setting the white balance will obviously depend on your camera. For me, I have a white balance button that I just kind of click. Uh, most of the time, the white balance settings are on auto. Uh, and there's actually several default options here. Uh, what you want to do is uh, look to see whether your camera has a setting uh, where you could set the color temperature in Kelvin. Uh, so my I have this option, it's just called color temperature. And you want to pick the essentially highest value that your camera could have. Uh, is, it will be especially ideal if that highest value matches the settings uh, on uh, uh, the color spectrum on your LED. So for me, the highest that I could go is 10,000. And I find that with that setting, I'm able to take uh, a pretty uh, true uh, pictures uh, true in terms of uh, color temperature uh, so the pictures that I take don't appear to be too blue or too red they appear to be just right uh, and so I often use the setting I change my radiance to a 12k spectrum and I use the setting and I'm getting pretty good pictures without having to mess around with uh, uh, Photoshop or Lightroom after taking a picture So one important tip, uh, obviously, when, you, when you're shooting through the glass here, is that you want to be uh, perpendicular, perfectly perpendicular to the glass. So you don't want to be pointing up or down or side to side. You want to be straight on. Uh, so that goes if you're shooting top down above the water. If you're in a porthole, then obviously you, you, you can go on an angle, uh, but uh, if you're doing top-down shots or shots through the glass, you want to make sure that you're perpendicular to either the water surface or the glass. So let's say you've set up your light and, uh, and you're ready to shoot, you've cleaned the glass and everything is ready to go and now it's time to actually like uh, put the camera into place and, and position things. So the first consideration that you should decide on is whether you're going to be shooting corals or whether you're going to be shooting uh, uh, fish. Uh, if you're shooting corals, then I strongly recommend using a tripod. And what you want to do is you want to uh, essentially position the tripod to get the composition that you want. And then there is uh, a couple of settings that I like to uh, uh, use if, if I'm shooting my corals. And so the, uh, the basic idea is that because you're going to be using a tripod, uh, you want to have a long exposure time uh, with uh, lower uh, ISO. So uh, that means you want to set the ISO to around 400, 800, uh, and maybe 16, uh, 1600 if, if you want, and then find the f-stop and the shutter speed that, that you wanna that you wanna use. And typically, it's gonna be kind of a slow exposure. Uh, so let me just uh, shut this here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I have the camera set on manual, and what I'm gonna do is kind of set the ISO sensitivity to. Yeah, let's say 600, 640, or, or 800. And then you want to adjust. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is, is figure out what the f-stop is going to be. So uh, uh, depending on what you're shooting and, and what you want to be in the depth of field, you're going to either kind of go with like a, uh, I wouldn't go any more than, than f-16 uh, for, for a picture where you're going to have a bit of depth of field. Or let's say if you want to like take a picture of you're just isolating a a couple of polyps and the rest you want it to be kind of nice and blurry, then you want to change the f-stop to let's say like uh, f8 or, or f, uh, uh, f7. And then 
you use your light meter that's built in the camera to figure out what the shutter speed has to be to get you uh, a proper compensation. So let's say a, certain, a proper exposure. So in my case, uh, let's pretend that I'm shooting my, uh, my camera here, uh, actually shooting my tank here. So you see here, mo most uh, the, uh, SLRs will have the, a light meter that you either see through the viewfinder or, uh, uh, or this uh, digital uh, screen here. So if I change the, so right now it's showing that the pictures is really underexposed. So you essentially keep opening up, uh, open the shutter off for longer until you're getting the exposure that you want here. So one over 10 means that you're, you're essentially opening up the shutter for a 10th of a second. And any, any time your, uh, your shutter speed that where the denominator is smaller than the focal length of, uh, your, the lens that you're shooting with. So my focal length is 60 here. So 10 is, uh, oh, you can't see it. Oh, there it is 60. So, uh, 10 is obviously smaller than 60. So that means that if you're going to handhold the camera, there's going to be a lot of shake. So you, 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 this is why we use a tripod. Uh, and with these settings, uh, using a tripod, you're going to get nice, uh, well exposed pictures of, uh, of your corals. Uh, they're going to be steady. They're not going to be out of focus because you're using a tripod. Uh, one thing that uh, if you're going to, if you're going to use kind of settings like this for your corals, uh, you want to make sure that you turn off the circulation in your tank. So that way, uh, water is not moving the polyps because the movement of the polyps is going to, is going to make it seem like the polyps are out of focus. Okay, the other consideration that let's say you wanted to shoot fish, then what I typically do is I have a different set of settings. Uh, because when you're shooting fish, they're essentially going to be chasing them around the tank and it's hard to know exactly what the light conditions are going to be at the specific spot when you, when you, when you finally like press the shutter release. So for that case, what I typically do is I set the ISO to, uh, to be automatic. So essentially the, the computer in the camera, the processor is going to change the ISO to give me good exposure. So now all I have to focus on is setting these two numbers, the f-stop and the shutter speed. And so typically for, uh, for fish, I, sh I shoot any orbit of an f-stop between f6 to uh, f12. Uh, that, that is a range that I typically uh, find uh, kind of gives you pleasing details on, on the eyes of the fish. Uh, but the background is a little bit out of focus. So you, you could fine tune that a little bit. The other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that if you're going to be shooting fish, I don't typically use a, a tripod for shooting fish. So you want to make sure that your shutter speed is fast enough that when you're shooting handheld, you're not going to get sh a camera shake. So the, the, the key, the magic number is you want to be, the shutter speed has to be one uh, at least bigger than one over the focal length of your lens. So I'm shooting with a uh, 60 millimeter lens here. So that means I want my shutter speed to at least be bigger than one, one, six, one, one over 60 or one sixtieth of a second. Uh, it's also better to err on the side of caution. So I typically would shoot with one over uh, 100 or one over uh, one two fifty. So this is fast shutter speed that I'm not going to get camera shake. And see if you would notice that the ISO now, the camera, is changing the ISO to get me perfect exposure uh, uh, for the manual settings that I picked. So one thing that I do uh, when I'm shooting fish because they move fast is I don't rely on the autofocus. Uh, the problem with the autofocus is that if you use the autofocus, let me just show you here, it takes a while for the camera to acquire the focus and often between the time that you find, uh, you acquire the focus and shoot, uh, the fish is well off uh, out of the frame. So what I typically do is I set the focal, uh, uh, set the camera on manual focus. And I put kind of a, a, a distance, a focal distance that I know is going to give me the right size image. So, I mean, it depends on the kind of fish that you're shooting and whether you want a close up or so on. But let's just say that, you know, for, for your purposes, you want to shoot at about like two feet out. So I set the focal distance here on my lens, two feet. And then, so what I do is I kind of focus by moving in with the camera. And so I'm kind of sitting and looking in front of my tank and 
I move in, move in, move in, and as the picture comes into focus, that's when I snap. And I'm gonna show you how fast this is when you're like not using the preview. Uh, so typically, if you're like doing this regularly as you move in, as you acquire the focus, it's a very, very quick process. I'm, I'm doing this blind, so this is not gonna be the, uh, these, none of these pictures are gonna be in focus. But the point is that you're essentially, you're slowly approaching your subject, you're looking in the viewfinder, and as soon as you come into focus, you snap the picture, and you have a picture that will most likely be in focus. Okay guys, that's it. Uh, so uh, hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. Uh, photography is a lot of fun and uh, and the great thing about digital is uh, there is no cost for experimenting right so you could take thousands of pictures and and have fun and try different things uh, without like spending uh, thousands of dollars on film like uh, we used to do in the old days and before I sign up I just want to uh, bring to your attention this uh, competition that I've been uh, running uh, it's going to expire in a couple of weeks it's for the Avast Marine Portal so if you haven't already uh, seen the video uh, or entered the competition please do so I'm going to leave the link up here and thanks so much for watching and see you later have a good one